Let's talk about matter and chemistry. So as we discussed before, chemistry is the study of interactions of matter with other matter and also with energy. Now what we want to do in this presentation is explore definitions. So basically, how do we identify matter? What are the physical properties of matter? And also, what are some chemical properties of matter? And so in this image here, you can see all different kinds of matter. Fish, wine, rocks, fire, all kinds of things. Okay, so let's start with a basic definition of matter. So matter has mass and it takes up space. So those two things have to be there. So some examples, we have amoeba, elephants, books, computers, your paper tablet, your bicycle, your car, all of those things would be matter. Now some of the things that aren't considered matter would be emotions and thoughts. Basically you can't really, you know, get your hands on that, so shall we say. So let's do a quick little test. Uh, identify which ones are matter and which ones are not matter. And so go through them and then uh, check your answers on the next slide. Okay, so which of the following is matter and not matter? So a hot dog has mass, takes up space, so definitely qualifies. But love is an emotion, and emotions aren't matter. A tree definitely has mass and takes up, takes up space, so it's matter. And ideas are definitely not matter. They're cool, but they're, not, they're definitely not matter. All right, so what about physical properties of matter? Now, these are things that describe matter as it exists. So, shape, color, size, temperature, all of those things are physical characteristics. Um, another really important characteristic is the phase or the state of matter. And you've probably heard of the phases of matter. And the three fundamental ones that we're gonna talk about are solid, liquid, and gases. And um, we'll be talking about those in this course. So you can see solid ice cubes, liquid water, and then if we have water in a teapot, we have gaseous water. Now what about chemical properties? Now this is how matter changes form in the presence of other matter. So for instance, we see in this picture a match is burning. So that wood you know, carbon is burning and we're ending up with carbon dioxide and water. And so basically we're taking one form of matter and converting it into another form of matter. So burning is always considered a chemical property. Now what about, um, you know, if we put sodium metal in water, that's going to produce a violent reaction. We're going to end up with something different at the end of the reaction. And, um, and so that reaction is a chemical reaction, okay? Uh, now, you, you want to get to where you can identify physical versus chemical changes of matter, okay? Now, physical change, I usually, I like to think of that as something that's reversible. So, for instance, if you take an ice cube and you melt it into water, and that's a physical change, and then you refreeze it into another ice cube, then that would be a great example of you know, a physical change. All you did was change the physical state. Um, if you, you know, vaporize it, so heat it up, boils off, but let's say you collect that vapor and you recondense it and it's back into liquid water, again, that's just a physical change. Um, and the bottom line is that when you're finished with a, a physical change, you haven't changed the chemical composition of the matter. So it, that is not affected. So that's, a, that's another way to really identify a physical change versus a chemical change. So here's a little quiz, and unfortunately I already gave you the answer on this, but go ahead and read. So is this a physical or a chemical change? And we'll take a look at the picture. And then the important part, go ahead and justify your answer. See if you can explain it to yourself. All right, so yes, if you said it was a physical change, you are right and it's going from a solid state to a liquid state and if we refroze the water we would get a solid phase again so that's going to be a physical change 
Okay, so another quiz. We're going to look at each of these processes and we're going to try to figure out whether it's a physical or chemical change. So we have a fire in the fireplace and we have water warming to make a cup of coffee. Okay, so as I mentioned, anytime we're burning anything, that's going to be a chemical change. So as the wood burns, we're going to produce carbon dioxide, we're going to produce water. And those are totally new forms of matter and they have different properties. So we can't say that wood and carbon dioxide and water are the same thing. Um, now, if we just warm water, then that's just a physical change again. We just haven't maybe warmed it enough to vaporize it, but we have certainly warmed it and we could cool it back down and it would be exactly the same thing. All right, so now a couple more terms, and they, these can get confusing when you're just um, just starting out. So substances, elements, and compounds, and so how do we tell the difference between those? So a substance is a sample of matter that has the same physical and chemical properties throughout. So that's going to include lots and lots and lots and lots of things, okay? Now, oftentimes you'll hear pure substance, but you don't need the word pure because substance kind of already includes that. So it has the same physical and chemical properties throughout, so it's a substance. Um, now, there are two different types of substances, okay? One, elements, so that's what we see on the periodic table of the elements, and the other one is compounds. And basically, the easy way to think about compounds is they're combinations of elements, okay? Um, so an element is the simplest type of a chemical substance, it can't be broken down into simpler ones. And that's, you know, by ordin ordinary chemical means. Um, and each element has its own set of physical and chemical properties. And you can look those up online. You can look up the uh, physical and chemical properties for any element um, on the periodic table. So here are just a few examples. Iron, carbon, and gold. Those are all elements. And you can see their symbols there. Notice how gold and iron uh, the symbol doesn't isn't just the first one or two letters of the of the common name that we use. Now a compound, that's a combination of more than one element. So uh, so the physical properties and the chemical properties of a compound are different from those constituent elements. So for instance, if we take hydrogen gas and react it with oxygen to get water, um, hydrogen gas, oxygen gas and water are totally different substances and they have different physical and chemical properties. So there are over 50 million compounds known and more are being discovered daily. So there's just lots of them. Water, penicillin, sodium chloride, all kinds of compounds. Okay, now what about mixtures? So mixtures are physical combinations of more than one substance. Okay, so that means we're going to put them together physically. A heterogeneous mixture uh, it has two or more substances and it's not uniform throughout. So basically you can see that more than one substance is present and that would be a heterogeneous mixture. Now, now a homogeneous mixture is also composed of two or more substances but when you mix the two the naked eye can't see the, the separate components and so that's, a, that's an important distinction there with a homogeneous mixture. We'll see a couple of examples of this Okay, so I mentioned a heterogeneous mixture is not uniform throughout. Now, homogeneous mixtures are uniform throughout, and the naked eye can't see the two or more components, so we mentioned that. Another name for homogeneous mixtures is solutions. So that would be a solution of two substances. Here's an example of a solution. So we're going to take sugar, and we're going to put it in the glass, and we're going to stir it up. And once the sugar dissolves, then we're going to have a solution of sucrose in water, but notice that it looks like just plain water. We wouldn't know that uh, there was sugar in there without tasting it, for instance. Um, what about a heterogeneous mixture? Um, well, we can see the components. Look at this cocoa and flour mixture. You can see that there are two separate components there. That is a heterogeneous mixture. If we dissolve sodium chloride in water, so salt, if you're common table salt, uh, then again, it's going to look like it's just water, and we won't know in, unless we tasted it, that there was something else dissolved in there. So this one would be a solution. This would be a heterogeneous mixture. So let's quiz ourselves again. Okay, so...
these combinations, are they homogeneous mixtures or heterogeneous mixtures? So the first one is the human body, and the second one is an amalgam, and that's a combination of some other metals that are dissolved in a small amount of mercury. So just think about that for a second and then go to the next slide and check yourself. Be sure to explain your answer because that's the important part. All right, so the human body is a heterogeneous mixture. So we can see bone, we can see blood, saliva, skin, all the different components. We can see those separately. So that is a heterogeneous mixture. Now, the trick with the amalgam uh, is to think about that definition. So there's a combination of some other metals and they're dissolved in a small amount of mercury. So that word dissolved is your key that this is a solution. So we dissolve sugar to make a solution in water. We dissolve salt to make a solution in water. We dissol dissolve some other metals in a small amount of mercury to make an amalgam. So that would, those would all be homogeneous mixtures. All right, so here's a couple of elements just for fun. So this is mercury, so liquid at room temperature. And um, the elemental symbol for mercury is HG, capital HG. Uh, sulfur, yellow, and uh, elemental symbol is S, and it's a nonmetal. Okay, so there's a couple of elements. And uh, let's also take a look at our flow chart for categorizing matter. This is kind of cool. So you're going to start at the type of matter that you have, okay? And you're going to decide whether it's an element or a compound. So does it contain only one sub, uh, you know, one type of element? If it contains more than one type of element, it's going to be a compound. Then you're going to go down here, and is it a mixture or not? Okay? So if it's not a mixture, then it's just going to be that one substance. If it is a mixture, then you're going to have to decide whether it's heterogeneous or homogeneous. So going through our examples, water, so it's matter, it's a compound, but it's only one substance, okay? Sugar, again, compound, one substance. Mercury, that's an easy trip, going element, and same with sulfur, okay? So practice that as you're going through the homework um, to basically properly categorize and identify heterogeneous and homogeneous mixtures. All right, just a few other examples of everyday chemistry, plastic bottles, so that's a polymer, okay? Um, we do chemical reactions when we cook in the kitchen, often, and so uh, food is an example of a chemical reaction, and then as your body uses it, that's certainly a chemical reaction, and the combustion reactions in your car, so we're burning gasoline, so we already talked about that being a chemical reaction or a chemical change. Okay, now we can also dissolve gases in water. So all these carbonated be beverages, these are solutions of gas in water. Okay, so just a little summary. So chemistry, remember the study of matter and its interactions with other matter and with energy. Matter is anything that has mass and takes up space. It can be described in terms of physical properties and chemical properties and both of those types of properties of matter can change. Uh, matter is composed of elements and compounds and when we combine different substances we call them mixtures and finally elements can be described as metals, nonmetals, and semi-metals. We'll talk more about those later on.